guys, it's Kara from iStampin.com. Thanks for joining me on another one of my 3D Wednesdays. Today we're going to be making this really super cute little Halloween baker's box. Now if you received my um, exclusive newsletter last uh, Friday, you will think this looks very familiar because in the exclusive project, I did um, a Christmas themed baker's box. So I thought today we would do a Halloween one with Halloween just being just a couple of weeks away. I thought that I would use some new product that I haven't even gotten around to using. So um, I thought that we would do that today. Now, when I made this sample, um, I learned some things. So I'm going to uh, give you those tips, but I'm going to kind of tweak this a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more detail. I'm actually going to do some sponging. I haven't sponged in ages. So I thought it would be fun to kind of give this an aged look just because of it being a Halloween um, little treat box. But before we get started, I just want to say a huge, very heartfelt thank you to everybody that texted me, emailed me, Facebooked me, um, commented on YouTube, however you contacted me asking me um, how my family was doing, um, wishing uh, us you know, safety all during um, Hurricane Matthew last Friday. Um, it just, it, it was just overwhelming. I just, I, I can't believe so many people were, were worried about us and, and um, you know, wanted us to be safe. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. I let my family know and they were like, wow, mom, you know a lot of people. So um, I just wanted to say thank you again. It meant the world to me and, um, you know, I'm just thankful that we were safe and didn't have too much damage. Just a little bit of cleanup in the yard, nothing, nothing major. So anyway, all right, so let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to need two pieces of um, basic gray cardstock, and this measures six by six and a half. So what you're going to do, like I said, you'll need two of those, and you're going to use our Baker Box Thinlet dies to cut um, out the panel or the box twice. So um, you'll need this, and then you're just going to run this through the big shot and um, just put this on just cut this out twice. Okay, so once you die cut both um, of the boxes out, then what you're gonna do is take this little gizmo, this little guy, the little tab, and you're gonna, um, I mean, you can place it here, but it really doesn't fit. So what I did with this one is that I cut this out um, after I had cut the box. And the way I did that is once I had it cut out, um, well, I'll show you in just a second. Okay, let me go cut these real quick. Okay, and I forgot to mention, I usually do this at the very beginning. Um, I am using uh, the um, Spooky Fun and the Halloween Scene Edgelet dies. You can find this in our holiday catalog on page 52. And if you purchase these two items, the stamp set um, along with the um, Edgelet dies, use this bundle code and you save 10%. So here you can see, and I apologize I didn't show you all this at the very beginning and, and tell you that. So we're going to be using the, the trick or treat, and then I'm using this um, framelit, edgelet, and then this the little bat. So, but anyway, just wanted to show that to you really quick. Okay, so what I did is, you know, I've cut both of the baker boxes out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and go ahead and die cut that. And then once this one has been die cut, I just laid it on top of the other one. And then I just placed this die to match up. If, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe you can cut these through. I don't think these are really meant. I don't know if two things, if you can cut two at a time. I'll try that out and I'll tell you. If that's the case, then that's a lot easier. So let me try that. Okay. Looks like it worked. That's good news. I did have to use some post-it note tape to um, hold the um, the little thinlet die down because um, with the two layers, uh, even using the magnetic platform, um, it didn't. Uh, it was kind of popping up. So wow, it worked. Okay, so you can put place both pieces of paper together, and that will cut through two pieces of cardstock. Woohoo! Okay, so the next thing you are going to do is take your bone folder and fold on all the score lines and just um, give your score lines a good burnish. Okay, 
And then this one where we cut the little tab, this part can be a little tricky, so you just want to fold it over and just make sure you get, there we go, that tab part kind of messes up with the cardstock. And then also be sure that you fold the, the little edge parts here. I seem to always forget this and it's just so much harder to put together if you haven't already folded those before we put it together. Okay, so let's do the same thing on the second one. And while I'm doing this, I just want to remind y'all about the designer series paper sale that's going on um, during the month of October. It does include two collections um, from the holiday catalog, and one of them is the um, Candy Cane Lane designer series paper, which was the designer series paper that I used um, in Friday's exclusive project. And then the other one is the um, Halloween Nights designer series paper. Okay, so we've got both of those done. Okay, um, but the one thing that I did learn is that I think it's better to put this tree um, edgelet on the box before you put the box together because um, I had to go back and glue parts, but like the tree, you can see there, you know, the tree's kind of popping up. You know, you may like that dimension, but you know, for me, I wanted it flat. So I think it's a lot easier to put the edgelet on the panel and then, you know, I think you need to let it sit for a few minutes. So what I like to do is, you know, just st stack up acrylic blocks and let it just sit there for a few minutes. So what you're gonna need for that is the Halloween Scenes um, edgelets and then just a piece of whisper, uh, not whisper white, piece of basic black ink, <laughs> ink, look at me cardstock. How about that? My goodness. And then at the same time, you can also cut the bat. So you can do both of those at the same time. And um, this piece of paper is about two and a half inches wide, so that should give you plenty. And then um, you'll see what we do next. Okay, so let me go cut these out. Okay, so that's what I already cut a bat out over here. And I have to apologize. I don't know what I was thinking when I said earlier about the um, the designer series paper sale. I didn't even tell you what it was. Oh. Um, so let me correct myself with the designer series paper sale. To begin with, um, during the month of October, I didn't even tell you this. During the month of October, if you buy three paper um, collections, you get the fourth one free. And I was mentioning earlier that um, two of the uh, two collections from the holiday catalog are um, part of that promotion. And I don't know what I was thinking when I said that the Halloween um, paper was one of them. It's not. It's actually the Candy Cane Lane, which I did tell you that correctly, but the other one is the Presents and Pine Cones. So I apologize if I got anybody excited about Halloween and then I'm completely just bursting your bubble. So excuse me for that. I should have had that written down. I was doing that from memory and I didn't think it sounded right. So I double checked and I was wrong. Okay. So let me just make sure. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, our fine tip glue pen and I'm going to go ahead and glue all of this down. And then once it's dried, um, I'll snip off the edges that are overhanging on the box. So let's go ahead and just use this. Um, you can use uh, any other type of wet adhesive or dry adhesive. I just think the fine tip glue pen is perfect, especially for these really thin branches with the really t uh, fine tip applicator. This is just ideal for these kind of projects. And then if you um, haven't used this before or are going to purchase this for the very first time, you always just want to make sure that whenever you're done using this to go ahead and put the lid back on. This glue has a very, um, has a tendency to dry very quickly and then, whoops, I didn't do this part. And then if it dries, it's very hard to um, get the needle, if you can see that, the needle back into the 
into the applicator. Okay. And so I'm going to put this on the front part of this um, panel of the box and then I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes so it will set up on the cardstock. All right, so I'll come back in a few minutes and check on that. All right, so let's check that out. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is um, you can use Fast Fuse for this. I'm going to use the tear and tape adhesive. I know some people like Fast Fuse, but I just think this is easier. And what you're going to want to do is put tape on both um, sets of tabs. And then that will allow us to put the box together. So then the next thing you want to do is just um, place the box, this, the panels side by side, and then you are going to um, just line up the edges with the, with the lines here and just press down. Oops. Okay, and then just fold it over. Then what I like to do is just fold this one side over and then just bring this down in and everything should line up perfectly. Okay, and then you'll close that so that's how it's going to look. Okay, so the next thing what we want to do is to work on the bottom and I know this can get a little tricky for people but this is, it's actually, oh, sorry, I'm doing this off camera. It's actually pretty easy if you just kind of look at it. So you're going to put these tabs down, and then this is just going to fold right under, whoops, right under there. So that's how the finished box is going to be. So the tabs. So what we want to do is go ahead and put a little bit of tear and tape on this tab and on this tab. So both at the corners and then I also like to put a little bit of tape um, on those tabs as well. So again, so these go, the side panels go down first, and then this is going to go down. So actually you can kind of put these down together at the same time. And then you can stick your finger in there, your hand in there, and really get, really get, really press down that tape. And then if you, the good thing with this tear and tape is that if you did have some that kind of um, isn't covered up, you can roll it up and then you can just take your scissors and trim that off. I'll just leave it there for right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut off the part of this that's hanging over with our scissors. There we go. Okay, and so the next thing that I'm going to do that I wanted to, that I thought that it would be nice to add is I'm going to do some sponging, but I thought it'd be a lot easier to do it while it's in the box. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use basic gray, and then you're going to want to get um, a sponge. So these are our Stampin' sponges, and then just go very lightly and just sponge all the edges. But I just think that adds something 
Okay, I like that a lot better. All right, next you're going to take the Halloween Night Baker's Twine, and you're going to want a fairly long piece. This is probably, what, 20 inches? I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And then I'm going to just double it up so that I can have two pieces. Now, the other thing that I noticed, because... Um, at least for me, I, I want the box to stay closed. And if I don't put adhesive on these little tabs, it doesn't stay closed. So before doing this, you know, make sure that you fill it up with whatever goodies that you're wanting to um, give away. And then what I'm doing is just go ahead and using snail. And I'm just putting, oops, just a little bit on both sides. and then just pinch it together. Just line it up. Oh, come on. There we go. So just line it up and then just press it together. And so then what you're gonna do is take your two strands of Baker's Twine and go ahead and, whoops, try this again, and feed it through the hole and then just tie a double bow. Okay. And so then just pull the tails to get the bow to the size that you like. That looks good. And then just take your sharp scissors, ribbon scissors, and then just cut the tails off. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is do our stamping, and then we'll put the bat on um, at the end. Okay, I think that's good. I could fiddle with this stuff for ages. Okay, all right, so you're just going to need to get a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock, and um, I am using the Trick or Treat stamp from Spooky Fun. Um, you see that you have Happy Halloween, have some Spooky Fun, Eek, and here's a beautiful treat. So you've got, you know, five different um, uh, sentiments to choose from. But I'm going to do Trick or Treat. And I'm going to use my um, Mini Misty. I'm going to, I like the, um, here in the sample, you can see the ore is a different color. So this is black, and then I used um, Perfect Plum. Um, for that. So I'm just gonna put this in my Misty and I love to, I love to, whoops, do multiple color stamping. I just think it just adds some interest. And then we'll just cut this down into a banner after we're done stamping. So of course you can do this um, just using your regular, oh, whoops, your regular acrylic blocks, but it's foolproof when I when I do it this way. Okay. Okay. So since I'm going to do some masking, I'm going to go ahead and use my post-it tape again. Clean up my mess here, and so I'm just going to um, just cover up the or treat and stamp that with I'm using the memento tuxedo black ink and stamp that oh my gosh I can't believe I did that <laughs> how many times have I told y'all don't do that you have to remove this. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I can't believe I just did that. Okay, let's flip it over and try it again. Oh, I tell y'all that all the time. Don't do that. That's how you ruin projects. And I did it. I don't think I've ever done that before. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, let's try this again. How many of y'all were like going, Kara, you didn't remove the paper. Okay, now let's try it again. There we go. All right, and then we're just going to cover up the trick or, and now we're going to 
ink up treat. Remove the paper. Okay, and now what we're going to want to do is to clean up the stamp. I guess I've used up all my baby wipes. Okay, all right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to cover the trick and the treat, and then we'll ink up the oar. And of course, you don't have to go to this trouble. I mean, it doesn't take a whole long. I mean, obviously, it's more steps. You can see that. But I just like the I like the having multiple colors in my stamps. The stamped sentiments, I should say. Okay, then remove those again. And then close the lid. If I can get it. go and we're all done so there you can see okay so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to cut this down and I'm going to notch the end where it says treat so it's going to look like that so let me go ahead and do that real quick so that's what it looks like when it's all done and that's just going to go right there and then we're going to put the bat right there so let's go ahead and actually I've got room I'm going to use I didn't have room last time. I wanted to do this, but I just cut it. I cut it too closely. Um, I'm going to use our. Um, oh, let me tell you what these are called. The Halloween Nights enamel dots. You can find that on page 51, right there. So these are. You get 96 enamel dots in three different sizes and three different colors. So I'm going to go ahead and use the small one and the perfect plum and just put that right there. So let's go ahead and get out our blue dots and we'll put the banner on first. And so that will go there. We'll kind of leave it a little kind of hanging off a bit. And now let's take the I was going to say butterfly, the bat. And that will just go right there. All right, and there is the project. So you can see the first one that I did um, without the uh, sponging and then without the little enamel dot. Um, so you can make your choice if you like it without the sponging better. You can do that. So there's two different versions. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked today's project. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And you can head on over to my blog to find out all the details of the products that I used. So head on over to istampin.com. You can always find the link to my blog in the description box of today's video, along with all the supplies that I used um, today there. You can find that as well. Um, also, be sure to head on over to my blog to sign up for my exclusive newsletter. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'd love for you to do that. And I think that's it. All right, guys, have a fabulous day and join me tomorrow for 12 weeks of Christmas. We're on to week two. All right. Bye, guys.